Yeah, excited about Egg Bowl week. Uh, you know, big. Uh, it's a big game for us, for our program, and you know, national TV. It's really, quite frankly, a showcase game for the entire state of Mississippi. So excited about the uh, the opportunity. Uh, the health wise, um, you know, Scotty practiced yesterday, so I think he'll play. Ben Brown's going to be good to go. Benito uh, cleared concussion protocol and practice yesterday, so he'll also be good to go. Jonathan Haynes is probable. He's uh, a little bit gimpy on his ankle, but I think as we move closer to Thursday night, I think he'll be ready to go. But uh, excited about the opportunity. Obviously a huge game for a bunch of different reasons, but um, really excited, uh, always excited for the Egg Bowl. Matt, how does this week play out with you guys from a practice standpoint and everything with it being a shortened week and having the open day last week? Yeah, so we treated uh, yesterday like a Tuesday. Today is basically a Wednesday practice tomorrow. Thursday. So you just kind of set it up that way. And with us having the open date, we did have the luxury of setting it up that way. So today will be a typical Wednesday practice. Matt, it's just the margin of defeat last year. Just tweak these guys, Ole Miss, from a pride standpoint? I, I think uh, this game stands alone. You can't worry about what happened last year. I mean, this is two brand-new teams, you know, different set of circumstances. But uh, I think uh, you really don't need any extra motivation when it comes to this game. It's just it's very, very important to, uh, on its own. Are you guys mentioning the possibility of a bowl at 5-7 and seven to your players? You know, I think I think that's out there because enough people have been talking about it, but not really. We're not. We're just not something that we're talking about. We're focused on this game, and if certainly that happens, I mean, you welcome all the extra practice time and the ability to go to a bowl game with a young team. It's like an extra spring practice, so I think it would be a, a positive. But uh, you're certainly not focused on on that. I mean, our our guys are dialed in on this on this game. Matt, they, they've had guys suspended all year. I have no idea who they are. Did he, I'm sure they'll be back for this game. Do you, do you guys know who they are and, and uh, uh, no, scheme I, I, for them? Well, again, we, we, we have the luxury of having you know, every every game that they've played. So they've all played at one time or another. So you're, you're prepared and ready to go no, no matter what happens. And, and if, um, you know, they're, they're going to, you know, obviously play all their guys and we'll play all our guys. And, uh, you know, I think we'll be ready for whatever combination is out there. Matt, what do you see out of their defense off of film, in particular their ability to stop the run? You know, I think um, they're, they're very athletic, and, you know, they, they do a good job of movement and creating negative plays in the backfield. They, they have a very good pressure system. Uh, you know, Coach Shoup does a good job with that. And, you know, but I think that's the movement and their ability to blitz and get in the backfield to create negative plays. That, that's what you see when you turn the tape on. Matt, you talked about everybody on this team knowing how big of a rivalry this is, how important it is. What do you say to the guys to not get them too overexcited and too involved in the, the pageantry of it? Yeah, I, I, this is a very uh, emotional and passionate game, and, and it should be, as all rivalry games should be, with two passionate fan bases. And it's a, you know, it's a great college football game, but at the end of the day, you still got to go out there and play football. I mean, nothing that happens, you know, you, I mean, you got to go play football between the whistles and take care of your business and go play really, really hard. Uh, all the other stuff is not going to have a not going to affect the outcome of the game. Matt, you talk about how emotional and passionate of a football game this is. Uh, you'd be hard pressed to find anybody that's as steeped in this game as you are. Do you find yourself having to maybe step outside yourself a little bit to control your your emotions going into this well, game? I, I mean, I think you I think you want to be I think you want to be real. You don't want to be fake, and you don't I mean. But I mean, it, it is an emotional and it is a passionate game. Uh, but I think the the whole thing. Is I, I'm you know born and raised in the state of Mississippi. When you when when the game comes on Thursday night and it's a national TV game, you want the whole state of Mississippi to be shed in a good light. And I think uh, just with a good football game, two teams, passionate fan bases out there playing hard, that's the way it should be. We'll take questions up top. Coach, who sticks out to you this season with Mississippi State? Who I guess is a I guess a unique character specifically with that offense that y'all have to prepare for this week coming up. Well, I mean the obvious is Kylan Hill. He's you know he's the leading rusher in the Southeastern Conference. He's a very very good player and he do, does a great job you know making people miss, breaking tackles, uh, yards after contact. I mean all those things he's very very good at. And so uh, but you know both quarterbacks can run the football. You know that you add that dimension. Uh, you gotta you know you gotta uh, account for all eleven guys all the time and then the play actions off of it. Defensively, anybody on that side of the ball? Yeah, you know, I think um, you know, I think they got several young defensive linemen that show up. They do, a, you know, do a really, really good job there. They got long, they're long at corner, do a good job of press man. But I, just what I alluded to earlier, what they do a really good job with is their pressures. They bring pressure and create negative plays. So I think that that'll be a big key for us to staying on schedule 
and not letting the pressure, um, you know, cause turnovers and things like that because they've been able to do that some as well. Yeah, you know, again, we got to be prepared for both. You know, they went with Stevens last game up until like the last five minutes, so you you assume he'll be the starter. But you know, Schrader's done a good job with his legs and running the football, and him being competitive and you know diving for extra yards and doing all those things. But I think they are they are pretty similar. They both you know both have uh, you know try to hurt people on the ground and have some play actions off of it. So I think uh, just being prepared for both, but they are they are pretty similar that way. How would you describe your offensive line right now? Do you think they have grown as a physical unit? Or are they more a technical unit? Uh, what do you see there? Well, I, I think coming in, we had a lot of question marks, you know, coming into the season. I think uh, Coach Bignell has done an outstanding job because I think where they are right now is where they were, you know, after the Memphis game. There, it's a it's a different uh, it's a different unit. So I think they have improved game to game. And, uh, you know, I thought they've done a good job of gelling, coming together. But I, I just like the way that they play. It's, it's a cohesive unit, and they're really playing good, playing hard, you know, football. They're doing, they're doing a good job. But I think, I think very improved is how I would describe it. I think from the start to the finish, they've gotten better. And, uh, you know, I'll give a lot of credit to Coach Bignell for that.